Hi, and welcome to the 11th installment of Overheard Orlando. Today, I'll be sitting with Ryan Price. He is a local Orlando artist, and we're going to be talking about the processes that come into play when he is creating. We're going to be talking about being part of a greater community of artists and how he hopes to bring that community together with his newest project, the 99 Cent Zine. Stay tuned. You are an artist, as I mentioned in the introduction. So why don't you just start by talking me through your, what does the creative process of that kind of look like? Well, it's not, it's not necessarily linear or typical. Uh, I kind of just, I have an idea in my head or something like that, or something that I'm trying to work through or develop like an idea or, or I tend to work in, in series. Like I'll do, uh, for example, I did, uh, at some point I did a series of, um, these, uh, fat cops and dominatrixes. And I kind of just had this funny idea of the, the, the idea of authority of power or how that may factor into sex or, or how, how it would just kind of invert the power by making the cops soft and weak and, and the women like strong and and kind of domineering usually I'll, I'll just kind of work through the idea and develop it as as i sketch through it make a bunch of drawings about it and it can kind of change and, and develop and mature as i as i work through it all right so you will definitely be showing me those pictures after this interview is okay over. <laughs> okay for sure um so any muses any inspirations any people or things that kind of kickstart that process? Uh, not really. Uh, it, it comes from everywhere, like uh, 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 from, from nature, from, from a song lyric, from a passage in a book, from something I just observed that I thought would be interesting as it's represented visually. In, in, in my own way, it's kind of just like the camera's always rolling, and I kind of just work through whatever my subconscious retains or brings up or what I find fascinating. It's kind of like a memory storage of, of images and I kind of just take them or, or leave them really. So we spoke the other day and you kind of had mentioned that you keep this storage of images that you see something and it kind of like files away in the back of your mind so that you can recreate that later. So is that like a photographic memory? Uh, I guess uh, I don't. I don't really know. I've never had it like classified by anybody, but I I feel that like I can, I can bring something back pretty easily as I remember it. Um, I I don't I don't know what you would call it, but I feel pretty confident in the power of my memory and the power of my imagination. So I kind of typically like to employ them when I work. What is the most important thing that someone has ever taught you in regards to art or creation or anything on that spectrum? Pretty, pretty much that um, it's, all, it's all transitory. One, one thing that you learn from another practice or another discipline, you can easily enough apply to, to about anything because I, it's my firm belief that in art, it, it, it employs every discipline, science, math, bi biology, you know, understanding anatomy, you know, just understanding the world around you as it manifests. And science has helped to kind of enhance artists' understanding of the natural world as it has made us more aware of the way that things are atomized and divided so that that can also find its way into manifesting in, in, in art, like how, how we think about certain types of systemic structures or, or, or how, how like, uh, literary functions like postmodernism can, can affect 
the visual language as well. And all those things can just be applied. Whatever your interests are, whatever your interests lie, you should be passionate about your interests. Like if you like a certain thing, if you like a certain topic, that, that will show in your artwork subconsciously you, without you even knowing about it. So I think it, it's very important to keep that in mind and also to just always have a sketchbook. Always, always make it easy for you to work. Always make it easy for you to process these ideas, whether you need to, whether you write it down, whether you, whether you sketch the idea out, or just make it easy for yourself. Don't, don't make it difficult because it's not. It shouldn't be. So you had mentioned something there about the subconscious mind. And I know that we have previously spoken about using meditation to kind of get in touch with that side of yourself. Could you maybe rehash what you have told me in the past about that? Just kind of how, how you utilize meditation and what it actually and what it does for you? Well, I guess like in a lot of ways, there are there's not just like there are different things that I find meditative. This is, you know, like it's not just necessarily sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor saying a mantra. Uh, I find I find drawing a meditative process. It allows me to think about something and and just kind of dive into an idea or I like to go for a walk. I find that very meditative and very calming or running is very meditative and calming. But but I just find that very important because it, it kind of helps you transcend certain things that could block you or block your creative process and that's what a lot of people i feel have have a difficulty with is that they'll let the the artist block or the writer's writer's block hang over their head as opposed to to trying to nullify it somehow or quiet it or or you know do something to take your mind off of it you don't always have to be creative you don't always have to be making something or writing something or or any of those things you can you can rest you can just sit outside stare at the lake for 30 minutes and you might find something more important in that experience than banging your head against whatever you are banging your head against so that's kind of the way i i use it is to just kind of still the mind and discipline the mind into focusing on the subject at hand as opposed to worrying about things like worrying about, well, I gotta pay my rent this month. Well, you you'll pay your rent this month. That that's that's going to happen. Just don't worry about that and and work, regardless of that, or do what you enjoy regardless of that. I'm really glad you said that because I know myself personally, I can kind of fall prey to the productivity myth, where every second of every day I have to be doing something. Um, and at times like even will feel guilt about relaxing or staring at a lake for 30 minutes. And I definitely try to, to tell myself not to feel that way or that it's okay to have a break from all the noise, especially in, in times like these, sometimes you really just need a second to process everything. So your newest project, the 99 cent zine just came out today, actually at the time of recording. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about that? This this just kind of started as my response to what I felt initially with like I think it was sometime in April, and I was thinking about well, well this this is really this really sucks for for me as an artist is that I was looking forward to having a few exhibitions, and what this has done is that it kind of just you know you can't really go to a gallery the same way that you could. There's not going to really be a big opening night where people might buy your work or anything like that. So I had thought, well, well, what can what can you be what can be done? Meanwhile, I have all this time at home. I'm not really doing much, you know. Like I'm I'm always going to be making paintings, always making drawings, but like I have more time to devote to something else, especially because it's summer. I'm I'm off my my courses. So I, I had this idea, well, well, what's another way that you could kind of have like a group show or have like, a, and I'd always been interested in zines. I like the idea of like a little bite, bite sized thing that you can easily print or easily distribute. And I thought, well, 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 we have a lot of resources for that now. We have social media. We have, you know, you can just download it as an ebook. You can download it as a, as a PDF. And I thought, well, that, that's an easy, 
easy enough maybe remedy for you know th th there doesn't always just have to be this gallery structure there's there's different ways that you can spread artists that may not have gallery representation or you know some big budget to market themselves so i thought well what's you know if you make it digitally you could sell it for dirt cheap you could sell a pdf for 99 cents and i thought i kept thinking of over and over i, I realized i i had had that maybe in my subconscious like i said earlier like i like those uh those arizona can drinks those are 99 cents and i always thought about that Ooh, that 99 cents price points really nice and i thought that could be the look that could be like this coin or something like that and that's initially then that's what i started to kind of develop the idea as and you know i just kind of i just acted on it and i was like okay well no that's a good idea i can actually reasonably enough make that happen i'm i i've i've not and, I'm, and honestly i didn't really i know like a, i knew a little bit about illustrator but I'm the type of person that like if I need to know how to do something, I will learn how to do it. Like I was learning, I have my my girlfriend's a graphic designer. She helped me a lot with this project and making sure it looked the best it possibly could. And I'm very thankful for her help and thankful for everyone that that participated. And I, I will give a quick shout out to everybody that's featured in this zine. We got we got uh, this July 2020 issue. We have uh, Lila Villalobos, who is a UCF alum. Uh, we have uh, Anthony Mancuso, who is a, a colleague of mine in UCF's MFA program. Um, we have Shahrazad Thanard, who is also a, a colleague of mine. Same with Gabe Cortese. And um, I also have, uh, he teaches drawing at UCF right now, Forrest de, de Bois. I think that's how you say it, Du Bois, Du Bois. I think it's like that. And then I also have uh, an, uh, uh, an experimental animation student at UCF. Her name's Rebecca Rios. Um, two other uh, UCF alumni who are getting their master's at, um, I think, FSU. Uh, Samantha McCoy and Chris Rivera. Two other UCF students, uh, August Mendez and... Milo Davis, he just graduated from the MFA program at UCF, uh, Jacob Wan, a fantastic bookbinder, uh, great artist. But all of them are great artists. I was, I was super happy to see uh, what, what came out of them. But uh, also my, my best friend, my childhood friend, who is going for studio art at USF, uh, Leonardo Claudio, uh, St uh, John Stemberger, or, or I think he wants, wanted me to say Stemberger, great great orlando artist oh this uh there's this comic co comic strip artist uh from miami florida his name's drew lerman he has some great uh he has this great comic series called snake creek oh and uh another ucf student uh kevin flores who's a great illustrator he's a great artist great up and coming a lot of up and coming artists some some have had exhibitions like uh the different ranges of, of levels but still just great work overall I was very excited to have all of them on board. And it, it I'm very happy with how it came out. It came out great. And it's available for purchase on my website. If you go to uh, Ryan Otero Price, R-Y-A-N-O-T-E-R-O Price dot com slash shop slash 99 cents. And you can get it there for 99 cents. And it'll just be a, it'll download a PDF. And there you go. You got the zine. Easy enough. Now, I will say that was an absolute laundry list of artists, and I have taken a peek at the zine itself as well. And I got to say, for 99 cents, it is such a deal. I've been to a couple of zine fests, and I have spent over $100 at both, and I can know how pricey zines can get. They're totally worth it, but at 99 cents, you're just you're giving a lot of content here. Um, is there any possibility for a print version? Yeah, it's definitely... Uh definitely possible um i would like maybe maybe in the future if it grows a little bit that would definitely be uh, a venture i would like to add to it i'd like to maybe maybe even do like limited edition print and like sell them for a, for like ten dollars or something like that just like oh we made 100 copies of the physical get them get them while we have them or something like that but uh i like 
the the ease of the distribution of of the digital version. And all these artists you just found kind of in your network that you've kind of gotten to know as you went through the Orlando art world, I would assume. Yeah, these are all my friends. Like <laughs> I like to I'm the kind of person I like to hook up my friends. Like I don't I don't I'm not I'm not selfish. I'm not greedy. I don't I don't care about those things, but like I want everyone to get a slice of the pie. I think that's I, I think we should break bread instead of, you know, try to get one over on each other. So featuring so many different artists and so many different art styles, it does beg the question, do you feel like one form of art can actually be better or worse than another form of art? Or is it just kind of like a beauty in the eye of the beholder thing? Or is it somewhere in between? Yeah, it's a it's a matter of preference, definitely, because like I'll I like things that people don't like and people like things I don't like. It's not to say one is better than the other or more valid than the other. It's 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 like a like if you like a certain color, if you like a flower, if you like a different like nature is not trying to please you. Sam is the same way that the artist isn't trying to please you. It's just a matter of if oh well, actually this this resonates with me. This means something to me. That's why people like certain songs, certain books. Some people don't like certain songs or certain books or certain paintings and things like that so for me it's really it's really up to you but each each artist i mean i i think i've i've had some <laughs> we've had some arguments over over some beers or something like that at sports town you know arguing about what we think is art what we think is valid what we think is good what we think is a bad approach i don't think realism is a good approach i don't think uh, uh photo realism's i think it's useless and stupid some someone might find it good to contain their subject within. It's, it's fully up to the person. So as we reach the end of this interview, I did want to ask, where's the finish line? Or is there even one? Is there is there an ultimate goal for yourself as an artist or for the zine or both or neither or I mean, I would like for the zine to to be successful because that means that these people will have a that these artists that I would like to get their work out there the same way I would like my work to get out there. That way they can get trajectory. They can get exposure. They can, you know, maybe some curators will be interested in the zine and they'll see an artist for, for a show that they're working on. They'll, oh, this, this person, then they'll look at their Instagram and they'll see, oh, this person really fits what I'm curating for this show. So I think that would be a good outcome for the scene. Or some people might get work from it because they're like, oh, I really like this person's art style. Maybe they could do, you know, X and Y for me, things like that. And but for me, it's just no, I just keep every day's a blessing. I wake up <laughs> and it's time to make the donuts. You know, like it's 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 like going for a walk. I have no particular direction. I have I have a goal, I guess. I would like to be a professor for a career goal, but in my artwork, it's just whatever I'm feeling, whatever I'm maturing into, whatever I'm thinking about, that's the subject. All right, Ryan. So last question here, which I, uh, I ask everyone this, but what's your, what's your personal philosophy or what's your, uh, your view on life or people? What's, what's the point of those hours between waking up and going to bed? To fulfill yourself in any way that you feel fulfills yourself. I think it's that simple. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. No problem. My pleasure. What a cool fucking dude. I know that right now a lot of us can't afford to purchase art or other non-essentials, but for 99 cents, I just, I don't see how anyone could pass this up. You just get so much for that money. There will be links in the description to this episode where you can obtain your own digital copy of the 99 cent zine. As per usual, you may follow me on Instagram at Overheard Orlando Podcast or email me at Overheard Orlando Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening and stay true.